Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Sinister. It's 4.19 a.m. Probably woke up out of my sleep maybe about half hour ago. So, I had my phone on because I was watching something on YouTube before I fell asleep. So, I started listening to this video because it woke me up out of my sleep because I guess the phone got loud. But anyway... I want to teach y'all something, and this is why it's important that y'all educate yourself. This video is called Requiem for the American Dream, and I want y'all to listen to something. So for all of y'all who don't want to read, for all of y'all who want to stay trapped, but for all of those who want to really open their mind, watch this video. It's called Requiem for the American Dream. But listen to this part right here. Check it out. industry, the advertising industry, which is dedicated to creating consumers. It's a phenomenon that developed in the freest countries, in Britain and the United States. And the reason is pretty clear. It became clear by, say, a century ago that it was not going to be so easy to control the population by force. Too much freedom has been won. Uh, labor organizing, parliamentary labor parties in many countries, uh, women starting to get the franchise and so on. So you had to have other means of controlling people. And it was understood and expressed that you have to control them by control of uh, uh, beliefs and attitudes. Well, one of the best ways to control people in terms of attitudes is what the great political economist Thorstein Veblein called fabricating consumers. If you can fabricate wants, make obtaining things that are just about within your reach the essence of life, they're going to be trapped into becoming consumers. You read the business press, say, in the 1920s, it talks about the need to uh, direct people to the superficial things of life, like fashionable consumption, and that'll keep them out of our hair. You find this doctrine all through progressive uh, intellectual thought, like uh, Walter Lippmann, the major progressive intellectual of the 20th century. He wrote famous progressive essays on democracy, in which his view was exactly that. The public must be put in their place uh, so that the responsible men can make decisions without interference from the bewildered herd. There to be spectators, not participants, then you get a properly functioning democracy. Uh, straight back to Madison and on to Powell's memorandum and so on. And the uh, advertising industry just exploded uh, with, with this as its goal, fabricating consumers. And it's done with great sophistication. You don't see many wild stallions anymore. He's one of the last of a wild and very singular breed. Come to Marlboro country. The ideal is what you actually see today. Where, let's say, teenage girls, if they have a free Saturday afternoon, will go walking in the shopping mall, not to the library or somewhere else. The idea is to try to control everyone to turn the whole society into the perfect system. The perfect system would be a society based on a dyad, a pair. The pair is you and your television set, or maybe now you and the internet, in which that presents you with uh, what the proper life would be, what kind of gadgets you should have. And you spend your time and effort uh, gaining those things which you don't need and you don't want, and maybe you'll throw them away. But that's the measure of a, a decent life. What we see is in, say, advertising on television. If you've ever taken an economics course, you know that uh, 
markets are supposed to be based on informed consumers making rational choices. Well, if we had a system like that, a market system, uh, then a, a television ad would consist of, say, General Motors uh, putting up information saying, here's what we have for sale. That's not what a, an ad for a car is. An ad for a car is a football hero, you know, an actress, uh, the car doing some crazy thing like uh, going up a mountain or something. Uh, the point is to create uninformed consumers who will make irrational choices. That's what advertising is all about. Uh, and when the same institution's PR uh, system runs elections, they do it the same way. They want to create an uninformed electorate which will make irrational choices, uh, often against their own interests. And we see it every time one of these extravaganzas take place. Uh, right after the election, uh, President Obama won an award from the advertising industry for the best marketing campaign and uh, wasn't reported here. If you go to the international business press, uh, executives were euphoric. Uh, they said we've been selling candidates, uh, marketing candidates like, uh, you know, toothpaste ever since Reagan. And this is the greatest achievement we have. I don't usually agree with Sarah Palin, but when she mocks the... Uh, what she calls the hopey changey stuff she's right first of all obama didn't really promise anything that's mostly illusion you go back to the campaign rhetoric and take a look at it there's very little discussion of policy issues and for very good reason because public opinion on policy is sharply disconnected from what the two-party leadership and their financial backers uh, want policy more and more is focused on the private interests that fund the campaigns with the public being marginalized 